This is a video that I never anticipated that I would be making, but Katie Rahe, or as you guys better know her as, the TikTok advocate, has left me with no choice. Taking TTA's words, manipulating them, and then using them against her. Number one manipulator's tactic, Dooley noted. I don't appreciate being forced to make a statement on a situation I stepped away from for my family's safety, but Tara has left me no choice. About five months ago, I posted this video along with a stream of other similar videos depicting what the family court has been doing to my child and so many other children, and it was put up to raise awareness. I wanted to tell my story of what has happened with not just the family courts, but other civil courts within the system that we have had to deal with over the last 10 years. No, Tara, your claim up until this point was that you only wanted it to be about your daughter's story within the, quote, family court system. Which is exactly what TTA did. She focused on your daughter, did exactly as you asked. But now you're changing the narrative to you wanted to tell your story, but that she honed in on your child in order to make it look like she preyed upon you and your child? Little did I know that it would go as viral as it did and garnish as much attention as it did as well. Once again, no, Tara. You 100% knew very well what type of attention these videos would garner, not garnish. Considering that you had posted just one of them to Facebook five years ago, and that video received over 1,413,000 views, over 11,000 shares, and over 1,900 comments, which is probably why you made sure to post more than one this time. Just for good measure, right? And of course, then, just like now, you had someone help you in creating not only one GoFundMe on August 12th, 2018, Protection of Haley, but you also had someone help you create a second GoFundMe on August 16th, 2018, Voice of Haley. And guess who that someone was? The one and only Bethany. And from what I've been told, you received over $80,000 for these GoFundMes. So to sit there pretending that you had no idea what type of attention these videos would garner or that it was never about money makes you look like a joke. But as a result of these videos, your daughter's father's family have been put through hell, not only receiving death threats, but their reputations greatly tarnished, especially the grandmothers who Tara accused of second degree kidnapping. Things got so bad that the grandmother had no choice but to sue for defamation. Above, you can pause to read, are a couple pages from that defamation suit. However, I want to add that since Tara loves to claim that her so-called haters alter documents to make them look unfavorable upon her, that if any of you want to see these documents in their entirety and unredacted, you can head on over to the New Jersey court docket website yourself and just look her up. Long story short, Grandma won the defamation suit. Tara was ordered to take these videos down and to pay a sum of roughly around $18,000. The kidnapping accusation, in addition to many of the other accusations, both on the grandmother and the father, were found to be false which Tara even slips up and admits herself. Above is a screenshot from one of her Our Story video series. As you see, she is claiming the grandmother ran away with the child, hence attempted to leave with the child. After all, isn't that what kidnapping is? However, when the truth began to surface about the defamation suit, people began to confront her, which sparked her to release this email in a video that she has long since deleted as she realized it was contradictory to her story. Why? Well, because in this email that she is claiming was to her attorney at the time explaining the whole horrific kidnapping incident, if you pause to actually read it, you will see it explains nothing more than a grandmother attempting to say hello to her granddaughter and take a picture. This is what Tara does. She throws anything up and calls it evidence, thinking people will not take the time to read it. Now, this video was originally released on Tara's backup account. Tara Haley Family as her main account had been temporarily banned at the time.
When confronted with the fact that the grandmother never attempted to run away with the child, Tara denies ever having said this. Even though it remains to be one of the accusations in her R Story video series. The grandmother's actions don't even come close to what is considered a second degree kidnapping under New Jersey law. However, as we all know, the truth or the facts does not matter to Tara. She still continues to this day to try to convince people that the grandmother had attempted to kidnap her child. In fact, in this comment, she flat out claims that the grandmother kidnapped her child. In addition to all this, if you are referring to these court documents, you will also find within them therapist notes from a therapist that Tara herself had helped choose. As you will see, the therapist found that it was Tara who was being uncooperative, Tara who wasn't following court orders, and Tara who was attempting to alienate and coax the child into believing that the father's side of the family were not really her father's side of the family, but a bunch of fakers there to try to steal her away from her mommy. It's no wonder this child was scared, and I urge you, knowing this information, to please go back and re-watch the videos with new eyes. I urge you to listen to what the child is saying, the way she looks at her mother, and I promise you, it'll make a lot more sense this time around. Two days after posting my first video, Katie Rahe sought me out. And not just through TikTok, but went through a variety of social media platforms until she found me and was able to gain contact. Oh, stop with the dramatics. Once again, Tara, no, she didn't sought you out. She simply reached out to you on Facebook as that's where you originally posted these videos. And you can't message somebody on TikTok unless you're mutual friends. My goodness. He was able to get me on the phone where I spent a long time explaining my entire story to her able to get you on the phone? Tara, you jumped. Please, everybody, pay attention how dramatic that Tara is trying to make this video from her choice of words to the music. Trust me, this is on purpose. She suggested a GoFundMe. Suggested is not forced. If you didn't want it to be about money, you had the ability to say no, but you jumped. In my opinion, was your objective the entire time as you knew with the defamation suit would look bad on you to post one yourself. I was very hesitant to put up a GoFundMe, especially after she laid the groundwork for this GoFundMe. Hesitant? That's why you had to go fund me up within hours of speaking to TTA, right? Why? Because like I said, in my opinion, I feel that this was all planned. Especially when you considered the failed attempt at a GoFundMe only one week prior to this. You posted these videos because you knew from five years ago that they would be profitable. However, you knew you had to be careful because of the defamation suit. Hence TTA's role. It was all a setup, in my opinion. She suggested that I do a video showing my true emotions about the entire situation. And I said, well, that's going to lead to a video of me just balled up crying, upset about everything that has happened. She actually said these are the types of videos that she encourages her victims to make because it drives emotions, which brings in more donations. So I'm here to tell you, based off my own experience, that this is exactly what Tara does. She will take your words and she will manipulate them, add on to them, to push whatever narrative she's trying to push at the moment. I'm guessing that TTA probably did try to advise her to show her real emotions, to be raw and authentic, because yes, that does drive emotions and does get people to want to hear your story, which is great advice you would give someone claiming to want to spread awareness like Tara was claiming. But the whole and brings in more donations, I'm guessing that part is Tara's addition. But even if Katie had said something like that, you listened. The housing market obviously went up and the owner, the house was worth an extra hundred and fifty. You took it upon yourself to run across the woods, put on your best sad face, and then do a whole video or live crying about how you were so broke from claiming the dad and grandmother were monetarily abusing you, that the landlord had kicked you out because he wanted to sell the home. 
because the value increased during COVID. I don't believe for one second that Katie, being a very smart woman, would advise you to cry for donations. I believe you being a manipulator knew that crying would get you donations. Even if she had, my point is you listened proving it was about money. I said it was my opinion that I felt TTA was set up by Tara, especially when you considered the failed GoFundMe attempt only one week previous. The attempt to get the illegal eviction story up off the ground. It was only when that failed she decided to resort to these. However, due to the defamation suit, she also knew she'd have to be careful in how she got that profit enter TTA's role. It is Tara that laid the groundwork and unfortunately TTA walked right into that trap. It is my belief that Tara knew exactly what she was doing and it was all about money the entire time but let's continue with her video sorry but being an advocate is not manipulating people's hearts and minds to get the results that you want and spreading awareness isn't using your platform to dox harass and slander anyone that you perceive as your enemies it isn't putting innocent minor children in danger or exploiting your own child and spreading awareness certainly doesn't come with a paycheck like i said before i was extremely uncomfortable to put up the gofundme and didn't want to put it in my name i asked her if I could put it in her name, and she agreed. So let's have a look-see at your supposed evidence of TTA agreeing to you putting the GoFundMe in her name. Hmm, I'm looking. Nope, I don't see where she agrees. I see where you ask her. I see where she seems a little taken back that you asked her. But I don't see where she agrees, do you guys? So essentially, this is evidence of nothing but just you trying to manipulate people into thinking it's evidence of something. She asked me for the link to the GoFundMe so that she could put it in her bio. She saw the finished version with her name attached to it as the creator before she ever posted it. First off, the GoFundMe was already created at this point. She simply just asked you to send her the link so that she could help uplift your GoFundMe. I find it very telling that while you send the link, you also send another text message with the link. Would that be to distract her, get her to focus on your text message and not too closely at the link? Come on, Tara. It's very clear that she just didn't see it. She probably trusted that you didn't put it in her name and simply shared it. It's obvious she didn't see it because when she did finally see it, when it was finally pointed out to her, what did she do, Tara? She asked you to remove her name. So she obviously didn't want it in her name. So what point are you trying to prove here? But she didn't like the summary in the GoFundMe that I had put in there. It had too much in it about the landlord and the eviction situation. So she rewrote it and asked me to change it. Oh, here we go again. Let's have another look-see at this text message that you're claiming is evidence of her not only rewriting your summary, but asking you to change your summary. Hmm. Once again, I don't see anywhere that she is asking you to change your summary. You know what else I don't see? Your original version of that summary. So how are we to know if she changed it or not, or how she changed it? When you're not presenting your original summary to reference. All I see is her bouncing off ideas with you asking you what you think. Tara, you're a grown-ass woman. If you didn't want to change it, you could have said no. But as far as TTA knew, as you had written her yourself, you, she was there to help you help your daughter tell her story. And that's exactly what she did. She was doing her best to advise you on how best to tell your daughter's story because that's what you told her you wanted to do. When you read it here, you can see that she geared it solely to the family court situation confused because if you read your own text message to TTA in the beginning when she first reached out to you what do you tell her you say that you want to help Haley tell Haley's story 
Haley's story, again, is not the dispute you had going on with your landlord that you failed to pay. Even if you want to try to claim that this is part of Haley's story, when the TTA released her recant video, you did a video of your own, which you claimed that you wanted to do your story in slow progression, starting at the beginning and then ending with all the recent stuff that was going on, hence the landlord stuff. So even if we go by that, TTA still did exactly what you asked her. She focused on the beginning part of your story, which is your daughter and the car videos and the custody battle with dad as your video is about to show. The intention when originally putting up these videos was to put them up progressively until we brought it full circle to the current day and what's going on right now. They were solely to bring awareness to the injustices that are happening in the family court, the civil court, the courts all over the United States. There was never an intention to put up in a pumpkin. However, this person reached out to me. But as we all know, Katie's platform is geared towards children. So the landlord and the eviction, she didn't want to talk about that because that doesn't play a part of her narrative that she wants to spin to elevate her platform. Her narrative? Are you serious? Tara, you created an account under the name Court Sanctioned Child Abuse. You proceed to upload a series of videos exploiting your daughter's trauma regarding custody exchange. And then you write TikTok Advocate that you're trying to tell your daughter's story. You are the one that set the platform. This was your narrative. Because you needed money because you had gotten yourself evicted for not paying your rent. Katie knew about the entire situation. She even admits it in this text message saying there are so many people involved and there are so many moving. How is she admitting that she knew about the entire situation? In fact, this text message says the exact opposite. It is basically saying that there are questions being asked of her that she can't answer because she doesn't know. Because at this point... That is when the truth about the defamation suit came out, the truth about the fact you hadn't been paying rent, and people were questioning TTA. So she was basically telling you that you needed to answer these questions. I think it is this moment that she started to realize that she had been lied to. And she wasn't referencing anything surrounding the family case because the granny lawsuit ended in 2020. Your manipulation is literally out of this world and not in a good way. Because that is exactly what this text message is referencing. Documents started to circulate, showcasing that the grandmother had won a defamation suit against you for your claims of kidnapping. Showcasing how you got evicted for not paying your rent for almost two years. She's telling you you needed to answer the hard questions because she can't, because she don't know. But all Katie did was jump on my morality to ride on my coattails to gain attention and then ran as soon as it got too hot in the kitchen. <laughs> the TikTok advocate has over a million followers. She is a well-loved advocate who's been on TikTok for years. You're not really suggesting she needed you for attention, you to build her platform. Can you say narcissist? <laughs> like she said to me, the internet can turn on you like a dime. And that's exactly what she did. And that's exactly one of the things that Beth called you out on, wasn't it? And the only reason, Katie, that you're putting this out now is because you found out that Beth is in jail. That's it. That's the only reason why. Because she can't come back at you. And she's the one you're afraid of. You're not afraid for your family. You're afraid that she's going to report you for who you really are. You even verified it yourself by posting this text message between Beth and yourself. And by the way, Beth is only in jail on eight-year-old contempt charges for refusing to send her son on visitation to his sexually abusive paternal grandmother. You say that you want to stand up for children 
who are the victims of sexual abuse, and then you shit on the one person who's 